I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found him in my heart so pure and true and I would like to tell you how he came and changed my life completely and he does something no other friend would do for no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one ever take my sins and dark from me then how much he cares for me all my life was full of sin when Jesus found me all my heart was full with sorrow pain and woe Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me and he led me to the way that I must go for no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take my sin and darkness from me and oh much he cares for me every day he comes with new assurance more and more I understand it of his love but I never knew just why he came to save me till someday I see his blessed face above but no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other other friend so kind as he no one ever take my sin and darkness from me then how oh much he cares for me listen all my life would full of sin when Jesus found me all my heart was full of misery and woe and Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me and he led me in the part that I must go but no one ever cares for me like Jesus he is the only only one church of God that cares for me so much to die on Calvary so no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one ever take my sins and darkness from me. And oh much he cares for me. God bless you. And if you have your Bibles with you, would you turn to the writings of Ezekiel? And... Uh, 
the 37th chapter, Ezekiel 37, and we'll pick up about, about seven or so verses out of there, reading from verse 1. We read from verse 1, and if you find it, would you say amen? Ezekiel, and it reads thus, The hand of the Lord was upon me <clears throat> and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, you know son of man is a prophet. Can these bones live? In our minds, there's nothing good in these bones, don't it? These bones dry, good for nothing. Can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said to me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus say the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause the breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And he shall know that I am the Lord. Verse 7 says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Lord, we thank you one more time, God. The Lord, as we stand before your presence, unworthy, unholy, by ourselves, God, we are nothing. But in you, God, we are everything, Lord God. Lord, therefore, as we come, Lord, it's not about ourselves. But Lord, we are depending wholly upon you, Lord Jesus. Lord, that because you are our provider, you are the all-sufficient one. And Lord, as we walk through the doors, God, I pray, God, that with every need in our heart, with every desire that we have, that, Lord, they will all be ministered to before the day, before we leave this place, God. Lord, I have nothing that I can give, nothing that I can say, Lord, I'm trusting in you this morning that you would have your way, Lord, that you will come and intervene in our circumstances. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. And, and you may be seated for, for a few minutes. And as we just begin the conversation, we, we know it's a difficult time. It is a hard time. And it's a perplexing time for many. And we can sit by and say, is your problem, is not mine. You know, we do that from time to time. And we learn that in Jamaica because when violence is downtown, it is okay to kill each other once long as downtown. But when you cross half a tree and reach some places in the upper part of Kingston, then something is wrong and crime is bad and it is giving trouble because it's now on your doorstep. Before it was for them problem. Them can kill up themselves, but now when it comes to your step, it now becomes a problem. But we find here in, in, in the Bible that here the prophet says that, 
that he that he was taken by the spirit and was set down in a valley of bones. Are you with me? And he said, there were many bones, and behold, they were dry. Very dry. And the question that was asked of him, can these bones live? What eyes are you looking through? But we realize here that the, the Bible and the scripture speak, this is the whole house of Israel. And there was something that happened in their experience, something along the path that put them in this condition. And if we take for a thought this morning, I, we say separation for restoration. Because there's, there, is, there are promises in the word. And I was looking, and the scripture that I was coming from originally was in 2 Peter chapter 3. And, and here Peter says, for they shall arise scoffers in the last days, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the creation until now. And Peter says, for this they are willingly ignorant of. That you deliberately are ignorant of this. That the world that was, by the word of God, the earth stood up out of the sea and in the sea. But the next verse he said, by that same word, the world is reserved for fire. And the thought suggests to me that God has a word of prophecy. God has a word of promise. Every promise in the book is mine. But then we know that the fire at the end is a promise of God. He has made a promise of fire for the earth. The prophet says in the message, Restoration of the Bride Tree, he said, God spoke a word and he put his law behind the word. When God spoke the word, he didn't just spoke it, the word and leave it. He said he put a law behind it. And where there is a law, there must be an enforcement of the law. And to prove this point, the prophet says that God put an oath with the law, with his, with his promise. And because there was no greater, he became the oath to the promise. He did not just say, he swore by one, by, by any, because he couldn't swore by any greater, he swore by himself. He became the oath, the prophet says. And God became man, and when he became man, he made himself the oath. He confirmed his word in his death, burial, and resurrection. The prophet says, and according to St. John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. If you agree with me, say amen. But the prophet also said there was a time that before there was a beginning, that there was, he wasn't even called God. Because God is an object of worship. And therefore there is a period that he was not even God. Are you with me? And so, therefore, he existed alone with his thoughts. You, you, you're walking with me. And so he was there alone. And the prophet says, and if you can picture this, you would see like a light that came out of this great light. You would see him as this, oh, this great light. And out of him came forth this smaller light. And from that we call it the Logos. Or the concept or thought of God. And from this, he said, this is no less than God. It is not a second person, but this is all of God. And this is now the Logos, the creative part of God. And in this, and he said, and one day the Logos began to speak the word. He began to speak the mind of God. He began to speak a creative word. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord brewed over the earth. 
And he said, let there be light. And the evening and the morning was the first day. The evening and the morning was the second day. And God looked at all these things. And God said, it is good. It is good. That's a creation story. And the Bible says God planted the garden eastward of Eden and put man inside the garden, didn't he? You with me? And he put him there to dress it. And, and, and Adam was there. And Adam was alone. And God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. But if you realize Adam was in a position that he, whatever Adam spoke, that was what God wanted it to be. He was speaking the mind of God. But then one day the devil entered in to the serpent and therefore death entered into the world. But we realize that man has lost his estate. Where man was, man was a creator. You with me? Man was a creator that man spoke. And when Jesus said to him, if he, to, to, to the disciples, if you would say to this mountain, move. It's not a fairy tale. It's because that's where man was before the fall. That if Adam saw a tree and didn't want the tree there... Adam could say to the tree, you move, and the tree would have moved. Restoration. Because the word restoration says, we're going to put it back to its original place. Or its original condition. If somebody took something from you, and you took them to court, they, and the court said you must restore it, they're going to restore it to you in the, reason, the original thing, in the original condition that it was. Are you with me? Because if you live at somebody's house and, de and deface the people in the house, and you must restore it, you got to fix by the people in property. You got to give it back to them the way they had it before. And so here is restoration. Because the prophet says, he said, restoration of the bride tree for all that in Joel chapter 1, verse 4, let us, just, let us flip over to Joel chapter 1, verse 4. He says, that which the palm of worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, the conquer worm hath eaten. And that which the conquer worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. So we find ourselves one day, we'll come and say yes to Jesus, don't we? Because the prophet says, Whatever God does to his church, the same thing he's going to do to the believer. If you believe that, say amen. And so through the years, we find the church has diminished in its glory and in its position in God. Through the years and through denominational systems and dogmas and creeds, we find what we began at Pentecost, we came to a point that it was eaten down to a stub. Eaten down to a point. And here it is that God is saying that the, karma, the canker worm and the prophet says it's one animal, one creature, just a change of form, a change of, a change of appearance, but it's the same demon. And it's eating down the tree, this bright tree, but he says in Joel chapter 2 verse 25, I'm going to restore. I'm going to return to its former glory. And we find in here that we come to God Almighty as a people. And somewhere in there we think it's as if everything is okay. The, 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 the thing I heard Brother Dixon said this morning as I just came out of the vehicle. He says we got to take stock of our time to see whether you're in the faith or not. We come to a point where we want to hear God is going to bless you. God is going to heal you. God is going to deliver you. And you say, hey, amen. Hallelujah. We're going to get deliverance. But the word says in St. John chapter 15, if my word abide in you, if you abide in my word, and my word abide in you, then shall you ask what you will, and it shall be done. It's a promise, and there is a law behind the promise. That we can come and want the blessing. We want deliverance. We want the healing, but you must abide in the word. Therefore, we must leave the doctrine and the principles of certain things and move on to perfection. 
You want to eat in plenty. Joel chapter 2 verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty. And shall be satisfied. But you want to be satisfied. We want the blessing but we don't want the life. We want the blessing but we don't want the talk. In Peter he says knowing all these things. What manner of persons ought we to be in holy conversation? If you know that the end is reserved for fire and for destruction, what kind of people are we ought to be? We come and everything is okay. Everything is okay. I'm going to preach you a, 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 a farmer's doctrine. I'm going to preach you something about farming. You got to sow a seed. You, for whatever you sow, you shall reap, don't it? You can bring your money, come and sow it. But I want to tell you one thing. You better sow the word of God. You got to be sowing into the word of God. Amen? Amen. And, and the Bible says, for there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You believe that? Because we can do it the way you think you want to do it. You can serve God the way you think you want to serve him. We might believe this in the church. They can say what they want. But I'm going to do this. But your life God, must reflect Jesus Christ everywhere. Restoration of the bride tree. Again the prophet says God planted a tree at Pentecost. For a purpose. To bear his fruit. All failed through the ages. So God planted a tree to bear nine kinds of fruit. Nine fruit of the spirit. Nine spiritual gifts. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, faith, temperance, patience, meekness. God tree must bring forth. Amen. If you want the blessing. If you want the healing, if you want the deliverance, you got to ask what you will. But if you're going to ask what you will, you must have to do your part. You must have to abide in the word. The word must abide in you. And not sometime. Not sometime. Every promise in the book is mine. And I'm going to bring your children from far. Call my daughters from far. Bring your sons from far. But you know what? The promise is to the believer. It's to the believer. You can walk the way you walk. The promise is to the believer. If you believe, then you would not. The things that you do, testify you don't believe. If you believe, you would not. But if you believe the word of God, you're going to hold to the word of God. If you believe the word of God, you're going to speak the word of God. If you believe the word of God, you're going to live the word of God. Whatsoever a man sow it, that shall you also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. We think we can do it all we want it. When we want it. And God say all is well. God say all is well. But it's not like that. There's got to be a point in your experience. You got to wake up. You got to come to your senses. And realize I can't continue this way. And we wonder where is the deliverance? Where is the healing for Smith? Where is all of this? We want it. Enough. And we say Lord I believe. I believe. I believe. But when you step out. You know. And when we look by you, we know there's something wrong with the believing. You know? And you say, Where well, fear that the fear now come. But you you have not believed the full word of God. Ezekiel says, Thus say the Lord God unto these bones, I will cause breath to enter into you. Verse 7 says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. 
there was a noise. There was a shaking. And behold, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. For such a long time. The bones been sitting there for such a long time. Dried up. You with me? It's sitting there for such a long time. No life. This can't come back to life, you know. But here is a word of God. He says, and there was a shaking. And the bones came to bone, to his bone. And lo, I behold, and the sinews. You know what sinews are? Are the thing that connect the muscle to the bone. You call tendons. Or they have another name for it. What you call it? Ligament that connect the muscle to the bone. And he said, the sinews came. And the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them. But there was no life in them still. Hallelujah. After all the shaking. After all the shaking. After all we jump around and sing. There is no life in them. So you realize we can't mark. You can't mark your Christian walk by shaking. The amount of shake you shake is not a reflection so your Christianity is up to date. You could have shake and run around. You know what I mean? Say up your life is in any good standing. There's a music I was listening to and, and the girl singing and she said, if you know to speak in tongues, speak in tongues. And she said, she got it. I'm saying, oh Jesus. I'm saying, oh Jesus. If you know how to speak in tongues, speak in tongues. The big church down in said, the pastor said on one day, he said, when last have you spoken in tongues? And everybody goes speak in tongues. You know? And I'm saying, and he just lean back in me and I go, I wish I could say the things in Christ. I would try to say the things he said. And the whole church have to speak in tongues. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. One day the pastor said, we're in the, we're in the city. And one man had cast out the demon. He said, I know Peter. Was it Paul? But who are you? Who are you? It is more than, the, than, than, than works. There must be a life behind the name. That will cause the demons to tremble. When last you spoke in tongues. It must be a life that follows. He says, after all the shaking, bones coming to bone, sinews and flesh and skin, everybody look out now. Everybody, they say, but there was no bone. There was no life in these. You imagine after all that, all that God did, all the winds that blew, and all these things that are happening, there was nothing to it. You got to come back to the word, the true word of God. Your life must line up with the word of God. And the promise you want to know. If you want the promise, you got to do a part of the work. If you want the blessing, God give me some blessing. God give me this. But what are you doing for the blessing of God? Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. And say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as, I, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Oh, after all of this, here comes the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't it? The anointing is upon you. The anointing. But you know what? No, if you read further, then you're, still not, you're not free yet. You're not free yet. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dry, our hope is lost. We are cut off from our past. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. After all of this, you're still bound. You're still shackled. He said, I'm going to open your graves. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to loose you. 
Because now you realize that if you go back, there must be a separation before we get to restoration. For the promise to come, there's got to be a separation, don't it? You're with me? Oh, here is Abraham coming down and God says, leave your kindred and your family. Leave, I'm going to make you a great nation. And here is a man, Abraham, and Abraham said, oh, come here. Lot, you come. Father, you come. You, you want to come to? You come. And he just wants to care because it's a promise. It's a good heart. Come sharing the promise of God. But here the promise is to you. You can't say, I feel we promise in them. But the promise is to you. Every promise in the book is not ours. Every promise in the book is mine. You got to make it personal. When it comes, I won't pray for you enough for your blessing. But you know what the blessing can itself is? Promise in the book is mine. You got to see it for yourself. You got this got to belong to you. God, Paul says, I can preach you a gospel and myself be accursed, be a cast out. Don't it? I got to ensure I'm in there. Check yourself whether you're in the faith or not. And here's Abraham when he walked down, Abraham, when he looked, God said to him, still the promise. 25 years promising him. But one day God realized him can't bless him. He Abraham have so much. Lot had so much. But God said, watch it. Father dead. All right. God plan. Brother Mackey always said, God's plan, purpose can never be defeated. Can never be defeated. And don't forget that. You know, years ago, I always said that. God's purpose can never be defeated. Here is God's plan. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a father of a great nation. And here is a, here is a, here is a, here is a prophet walking. But God is going to do the separation. Whether you want to do it or not, God is going to bring about the separation. And if you allow God to bring about the separation, it's going to be rougher than if you did separate yourself from a long time. You don't want to separate you, but God wants to separate you. And God make lots of hurt men. And he, Abraham, heard men start to fight and start a war. And, and Abraham said to Lot, let us not be fighting. Look to the east and the west. If you go east, I go west. If you go not, I go south. You think that was just by just chance? You think that was by chance? You, you don't, don't fall asleep on me yet. Just so, just, just don't get the chance to sleep. You think that was by chance? God's purpose cannot be defeated. The moment Lot looked down on the plains of Jordan and said, come family, pack up in the bungle. We're going down to the, the green watery plains of Jordan. Abraham living on the stone, up on the mountain with the stones. And, and the moment he walked off, God said to Abraham, now walk through the land. You think it's by chance? God caused a conflict to happen. Because a separation must go on. He said, now walk through the land. And he said, look up. He said, look eastward. Look westward. He said, as far as your eye can see, all this I have given unto you. All this I've given them to you. Look up in the sky. You can count them. So shall your seed be. It's a promise that came after the separation. God has a promise for you. But as long as you're filled with baggage, you can't get the blessing. As long as you're weighed down, you can't get it. Oh, Paul says, so let me lay aside. You're walking with me. Lay aside all the sin. All the things I do in my own mind. My mental conception. The way I think the word of God ought to be. No, Lord, you don't mean it this way. God, this way. Even though the words are going to, I'm going to lay aside all the sin. And all the weight. Never left it aside. You know why? Paul says there must be a reason. I ask her, why are you here? Where you come from? Paul says, I'm going to lay this aside. And I'm going to press. If you don't have a reason for press, you're going to keep the baggage. If you don't see the need to push, you, you, the baggage are right. 
all of this load I'm carrying is okay. But you must come a point in your, ex, in, your, in your experience that you know that where I am is not enough. Paul says, you want to ask me? Paul says, I am a Hebrew of the Hebrews. I am of the stock of Benjamin. Circumcised the eighth day. As touching the law, I'm a Pharisee. As touching the righteousness of the law, I am blameless. But so, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mama's womb, I confer not with flesh and blood. Paul says, for those things that I have learned, I count as dumb. Oh, that I might know him, that I might win him, and the power of his resurrection. There must be a thing, there must be a place that is greater than your need, greater than your expectation. You must have a point in your experience with God. That Paul says, I count that as dumb. I count my university education as dumb. I count my job as dumb. I count my family that I might win Christ. That I might win Christ. That I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And you know what the next part of him says? If by any chance I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. That I might attain. You know, in a, I'm going to, you know, if by a chance I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I'm going to drop off all of this, you know. I want the resurrection. I need to be resurrected. And maybe I'm resurrected, you know. But may I do it the same way? Uh, he said, by chance. So I said, even if I'm resurrected, may I do the same way? Improving my chance of making it in. I gotta be separated because the resurrection is what I want to attain to. Because at that point, I will be restored to my former glory. Paul says in Romans 8, for I reckon, ah, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. When you are separated, it might seem difficult. Others might not like you. Others might speak against you. But for my separation is a greater pull, is a greater need. I must be separated. The glory is greater than the trouble. The glory is greater than the problem. The glory is greater than my sickness. Then all that will happen to me, the glory that shall be revealed is greater. I realize that the glory that shall be revealed is, is better. Far outweigh. Far outweigh what you want to say about me. Call me in the name you want to call me. Call me anything you want to say. Oh, you are this and that and all these things. But you know what? My conscience clear with Almighty God. That which you speak against me is false. But make sure I lie to tell you, you know. If I lie them, I tell you can't them say if your conscience set you free, you pray. You're gonna just wave your hand and give God the glory. Because Paul says, I am going to glory in my infirmities. Infirmities speak of sickness. But I'm gonna glory in my distress. I'm gonna glory in my pain. I'm gonna glory when it seems that God, I pray for healing and it now come. But you know what? Me, I hold on upon it, you know. 25 years. Abraham stood with a promise. God put a commandment. God became the oath. And he stood there for 25 years. Uh, you pray that you get up and say, God, I'm going to see that yet. Jesus, you pray and get up. God, I want to it. God, I want to it. You know what I mean? You listen to me, man. You've got to have some patience. I don't think none of us in here intend to wait for 25 years. So not at all. Don't it? 25 years? God, Jesus, man. God. 25 years. 
After two hours, you say, boy, God, it shall take forever. After two hours, understand the separation. And what this brings, because you want the restoration. And I'm going to restore your youth as I've done with the eagle. And this is Abraham at 70 year old. And you're going to have a son. At 100 year old, you're going to have a son. The Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was faithful. That means faith without work is dead. You believe me? Then it's, if Abraham had faith in the promise, Abraham had to be doing something about the promise. Abraham didn't just sit back and say, boy, boy, God said, I have faith in the word. Faith, let it happen. It was going to come to pass. Come to pass. Come to pass. No, man. John Ryan began to testify. Faith in the promise, don't it? So now that Abraham began to make preparation, baby is coming. Imagine Sarah at 90, preparing for baby. But I'm going to restore. And prepare. No doubt people might ridicule you. <laughs> eh? Baby, 90 year old woman. If you think it's funny, you watch when she was 100, near 100. And she go down to her and Abimelech look for her. And answer boy. And Abraham said, Tell them you are my sister. 90 year old, 90 year old woman. Tell her you're my sister. And the king said, Bring her, come. What a sweet girl. My God, 90 year old woman. But the moment you come in, the prophet, had the, the king had a dream. Say, if you ever touch her, I'm going to bring destruction on you. She's the wife of the prophet. Give him back him what? This is my man, 90 year old woman, preparing for a baby. But the prophet says, Imagine that one day she's all there. And she said, Boy, in, in, in Genesis 18, she said, Shall I have pleasure with my Lord? Imagine, says, She have no more desire. She had nothing like this happen, and she's going around. Say, oh, Jesus. Imagine she's going around and said, Boy, Papa Jesus, not one more time. And, and the man said, Boy, I never have baby. Oh, Jesus. It's not going to work out, Jesus. Oh, no wonder she laugh. Because with man, it is impossible. She was finite in her thinking. It can't work. It's not going to happen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, if you stood there, you had write this. Oh, but imagine one day when the faith begins to take, not even her faith, but Abraham's faith. And there, and when she stretched, she don't even feel the pain she used to feel before. And when she stretched out, she said, wow. Elasticity return, man. The bone, yeah, she said, yes. No cricket, no go on. And she turned around. She can't see herself. And I'm sure the feeling. And she looked upon Abraham. I said, boy, when you look so black. I said, is it Abe? She might call him Abe. Abe, what have you done with your hair? You know, looking at, looking at. I said, man, all the little wrinkles are leaving. He said, he's looking across. I said, baby. Ooh, you're as beautiful as the day I just met you. Wow. Imagine the surprise he might have had. Look around and see her. You know what? The, it's a season for the manifestation of the promise. You, you, you're with me? The season for the manifestation of the promise. It's not you doing anything. You're not doing nothing for the promise. The promise has a comfort. You have to just have faith in God. You have to separate yourself from unbelief. And watch the promise of God take hold. Take hold in your life. And it's there. And when you look as you rise up. That when she step out of there. All the neighbors must be looking in awe. The young people don't know who that is. The young ones at 20 year old don't know who that is. 
But they have to find some people who were some 90 year old woman who I said, but I remember the fierce day now. When we were young, I saw she didn't look when we were young. And that's what the prophet says. One of these days, when you begin to see the dead sage, about 18, 19, 20 years old, you got, if you don't know them at that age, you're not going to recognize them. You got to would have known them from a young age that you can say, ooh, you never know what I know that person, yeah, no man. I know this person because he will renew your youth as you've done with the eagle. 25 years for the promise. Over in Genesis, the Bible speaks of Jacob. You know he got the same promise? He got the same promise as Abraham. For in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And after he, him and his mother planned for them for him father. And him alone, his mother to him, his mother work it out, you know. You know, say, who in your corner? And I said to you all the while, the role that mothers play is so important. You might think, I'm just, just a mother. But here, when, when the prophet, when, 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 I, when Isaac said to Esau, go and get me, take your bow and arrow, and go get me some venison. You know, venison is, is deer. It's deer meat. He, he loved deer. He loved to eat deer, so Esau must go hunt the deer and come back. Prepare it so he can have it. The mother here, the conversation. And while Esau gone, because he said, when you come back, I'm going to bless you. The mother called Jacob and said, come here. You just, I'm going to cook some food, give you your father. And when he must say, but Esau is here, he said, don't worry, man. She get the animal skin and put it on him. And he smelled different, but she rubbed him up a little way. When he come in and presented, his ear, Isaac said, how oh, you come back so quick? How oh, you go hunt deer and come back so quick? He said, the Lord provided it for me. You know? One line story. Here is a man. A son. Of Abraham. You see what part we're coming down? The grandson of Abraham. Isaac begat. Yeah. Yeah. He's the son of Isaac. A liar. A jinnah. Him a thief. I'm just general, general Esau, you know, when I'm hungry. I said, boy, give me the blessing. I'm going to give some my food. Boy, that's one of my two boys, them to God. That's one of my two boys, them, you know. I said, Cowie and Wolong made at the same time. Yeah? And I said, no, you have to give me that before you get this. No, you have to give me that before you get this. No, you have to give me that. Oh, yes, all right, you're not going to get this yet. I watch him all the while, man. You're not going to get this yet. All right? So one has to give up something to get to what he wants. And here it is. That when, he, when he did that, after the blessing came, he saw running and said, My father, here is your venison. He said, But I just bless you a little while. I just bless you a little while ago. And everybody else said, No, but it's not me. He cried. He wept bitterly and said, Father, not even one blessing. Not even one blessing. Not even one. He even look at tops. He said, no, the only blessing I have, you shall, you're going to use a sword, or, but you shall serve your brother. From that moment, he won't kill him. He put a pledge on the ground. He said, listen, man, I will not rest until I kill this boy. I will not rest until I murder him. I'm going to kill him. Yes, man, two times, these two times, in general, two times, I'm going to kill him. The mother heard that again, and the mother said, boy, take away yourself. Boy, take away yourself. Run, go, so. Go down on my brother. Don't lay back now. Your father, brother. Go spend some time. And while he's on his way there, Bible says he found a little, mount, a little hillside and lay down and put some rock as in pillow. And while he's there, he saw the lad and angels ascending and descending. And when he looked, that was God standing at the top of the ladder. And God blessed him and God spoke to him. He said, the place that you put your head this is yours. But him walk off. Go down in fatherland. And in there he labored for one girl. You know the story. Seven years. 
And the father said, no, no, you can't get the young one. She might be prettier, but you can't get her. You have to get the older one first. He says, he's a wicked man. But he says, nevertheless, because I see my wife, I work for seven years. I work for more. And when he's done, he's done the father again. He's my father-in-law again. You find yourself doing the things, and Paul says, the things that I should not do are the things that I do. If we had a twist to that, you know, if you believe that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, that all that Jacob was doing was in the line on the plan of Almighty God. That sometimes your life goes down in some valley and come up and it's seen like everything around you is going crazy. But God is wanting to take you to a place in him. God is moving you from this point to this point. You, you, you with me? You have sat here so long. Somebody have to go move the cheese. Somebody, oh, you don't know the book? There's a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Somebody have to move your cheese. Then you have to get up and look new cheese. You have to get up and look new cheese. It's, it's, it's talk about work and all these things. Hello. The book name, Who Moved My Cheese? But the situation must change. And here it is that when he changed, when he left Laban and going home, he realized my brother still ought to kill me. But you know what? You got to come to this point in your life. He knows his life is in danger. You know your soul is in danger. You're with me. The prophet said, if you have flying in your soup, you're not drink the soup. Because it's contaminated. But we put things that are of the world in our system, the things we listen to, the things we feed ourselves on. He said, and we don't think about our soul as contaminating our soul. But we we're worried about the food and the 16 elements. He said, now drink this, the fly nice soup. You know, I guess it's contaminated. You're going to throw it away. But we take everything and put in our system. Here is Jacob knowing his life is in danger. And when his life is in danger, he split his family in two. You go. A couple of days later, he said, you go. And then he took a place and he stayed. And when he stayed there, he fell asleep. But then someone walked in the room. Jacob instantly knew who this was. This is not just any man. And while the man came in, Jacob lay hold on him. Hold on upon him. And the man said, let me go. Jacob, hold on tighter. If I want to hold on with him, hold on with two. He said, me now nah let you go. Me now nah let you go. Until you bless me. He refused to let go. I don't care what you want to do to me. I'm not letting go until you bless me. Where is your faith this morning? Where is your faith this morning? You ask God and you talk to God. But you know as you talk to God, you walk away and leave the door. Jacob said, I'm, I'm not letting go. I am not moving until you bless me. And when he did that, the man said, let me go. He said, because daylight has come. He must realize he's a special man. Because daylight can't catch him. Daylight is supposed to catch him. You want him? He must be a dopey man. But no matter who it is, but Jacob said, I'm not letting you go. Even when he touched him in the hall of the thigh, and he began to limp him, I'm going to draw him. Say, you, 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 you could have broke the foot. I'm not nah, letting you go. Faith have hair on its chest. Faith have big muscle. Faith is not weak and wimpy that anything come your runway and leave it. Faith is strong. Either you have it or you don't. May now let it go till you bless me. You might find yourself in a valley of dry bones. 
in a situation where you have become cold and formal in your experience. Nothing now happen. You just come church, you go home. You 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 after a while, it's like you, you just plug in. You just come church and go home. And come church and go home. And come church. And, and so the one time, I said, boy, I'm not go this Sunday, man. She let me not go this Sunday. After a while, it becomes the ritual wear off. The ritual begins to wear off, don't it? Because you come the same way, leave the same way, you come back with the same way, and leave the same way. What has God done for you lately? What has God done for you lately? Anything? Anything? But it comes a point now that we need to stop and check. See if you are in the faith or not. You with me? If it's smooth sailing for the last much years, you got to check yourself. Brother Dan Daisley always says, himself, every time I check, if, if I am not having a problem or a temptation or anything like that, him say, I go ask God, what's wrong? Look at me, not your son anymore. Him say, well, if I'm having it smooth and cool, he says, something is wrong. Something is wrong. If you're a son of God, the devil must be out to get you. He must be out to get you. And if you're not having that and your experience is calm and easy, something must be wrong. You, we need a reason to fight. We need a reason to push. Paul says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forget the things which are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before me, I press towards the mark. If by any chance I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. I like that thought. <laughs> what has he done for you lately. We come and leave the same way. It comes a time when we got to stop and check. Stop and check. Stop and take an inventory of our lives. Why is there no victory? Why is there no deliverance? Why is there no healing? It can't be that everybody God is not in the healing business right now. Come back about two years time and then come back with the healing business. God is not delivering people right now. You know, no. Or he might deliver down Africa, but he not deliver around Jamaica. He might deliver around so. Yeah, but he not deliver over here so. He might deliver someplace. No. If you believe God is God, God is God all the time. Everywhere God is God. Therefore, we begin to check ourselves. We didn't expect we go to God and not raise up everybody out of the hospital. No. But everything in your life, he promised you. Hallelujah. If you give it a promise, Brother Smith, you got to hold him accountable. Hallelujah. As long as you keep your part of the bargain. Though. You got to hold him accountable. You got to hold him accountable. The prophet said, for God is guilty of his word until he brings it to pass. He is guilty of his word. Until he brings it to pass. You believe that? Yes. You believe that? Yes. You believe that faith in God can move mountain? Yes. But if you abide in him. And his words abide in you. You can ask what you will. I don't, I don't care what the circumstance is this morning. I don't care what your need is this morning. You can ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Not maybe. Not if. It shall be done unto you. All he asks you to do is abide in him and let his word abide in you. Don't worry about the shaking. Don't worry about the noise and the clamor. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. This is your day of grace. For too long, weeks upon weeks, 
the doctors tell you this, that one tell you this, you come to God, you leave the same way, we come to God, we leave the same way, you must come to a point where you say enough is enough, enough, God, today is my day. Today is my day. You got to stand up. If you have checked and know that I am standing on the word of God. Oh, Elisha, when he came back to Jordan, after he said to Elijah, I want a double portion, and he got the requirements to receive, he said, if you see me when I go, you see that? He said, I want a double portion. He said, if you see me when I go, it, is, it shall be yours. It requires, therefore, that Elisha must keep him eyes on the prophet. If you see me when I go, I can't look off. I don't want to rub my eye. Because I must see you when you go. It's not what you want, what the prophet wants to know. It's what you want. It's what you have need of. Whatever you have need of. It's not what the, the prophet have or whatever. Use your need. I want the double portion. I want the blessing. He said, if you see me when I go, it is yours. And he, and he was walking. Something happened, but the chariot of fire came. If he was paying attention to the flowers, if he was paying attention to the baby, ooh, what a pretty baby. If he was paying attention to the phone, if you are paying attention to your neighbor, you realize what I'm talking about? Something happened when you're paying attention to everything around you. But Lord, I want a blessing. And you turn on your back and you watch everything while I go on. God, send the blessing. Oh Lord, send the fire just now. Send it to where you pay attention to everything. The, the blessing are coming on. You ask for it. Are you expecting it? You ask for it, but you're not expect if you're expecting it, you're preparing for it. But you're paying attention to everything around you. Can I say it? I sat beside somebody one day in church and somebody write out one old song, almost old song book to preach or preach and I write. I saw Jesus. It's not their own song, you know, no. I write it out of the only belief, some book in a different book. I'm going to say, why, you, I'm gonna say, why is this person writing out the entire song book in another book and the preacher I preach? Word for word, one song, verse, chorus, verse, verse, next song. I'm going to say, somebody transcribing the song book and the preacher I preach. But we want deliverance. We want breakthrough. But we are finding everything else to do. In the presence of the word. In the presence of the word when you should get what you want. You are doing everything else except paying attention. Or reaching or pulling on the gift of God. Come on man. If you want it. If you have need of it then you must go and take it. Go for it. Reach for it. Pull for it. Ah, oh, we do everything else. And we pay attention to everything else. But Lord, when you're gone, see, you know what the blessing came. If you see me when I go. If you see me when I leave. Ah, oh, then the blessing is yours. You can't see me when I leave. When you're doing everything else. You can't see me when I leave. You know, until some one time we used to tell people, if you feel like you want to see, get up and walk, man. No walk around, just get up and stop in that church, man. My man said, boy, but you get up and stand up, you know? Because I said, boy, you mean, de devil, you can't win today. You can't win, because if you think I sleep, I sleep, I stand up on my foot. And no, me said, but I never sleep and drop down then. But you know what? You got to put up resistance. You got to put up some resistance. If you want it, you got to go get it. And so when he, see, when he was walking with him, the chariot of fire came. He not just see it and just... He, say, he called out to him and said, the chariot of fire and the horsemen thereof to make him know, I saw you. Amen. How can you 
sit in the presence of the word into the truth and you don't say amen. You don't give him a praise. You don't worship. You don't nothing. But you want God to come and say, sit here. If you're oh, hallelujah, you got to do something. He inhabits the praises of his people. Come back, cross your hand and sit back and say, boy, God bless me today. God bless you today? Yes, he did. Where is the blessing? It's somewhere. It's soon come. It's soon come. The prophet said, you operate the gift. You want it, you got to pull from it. And when, when, when Elijah, Elijah's expecting to maybe feel a shaking, Elijah was expecting a noise, a shaking. Elijah was expecting to feel something. Oh, I feel it. Yes, Elijah, I get it. I feel it. No. All he saw was a mantle, the coat lying down. I said, boy, we're blessing them. Me not feel no different. You know, everything, me not feel no way. Me not feel no shaking. Me not feel nothing at all. Him just take up the coat and walk in. Me, and he was frustrated. He was frustrated. You know why? When he came to Jordan, in touch on the foot in the Jordan, you know, when Elijah was going across, Elijah stepped to Jordan, Jordan opened up, and he walked across. Elisha, come down and go, sir. Not now, go on. Elisha took the mantle, the coat of Elijah. Frustration. He was a boy, God, after me ask you to have a portion of blessing, I mean, I see the blessing. Eh? And the man said, if you see me when I go, you shall get it. He rolled up the mantle, and when he hit Jordan, he said, where is the God of Elijah? Boom! Jordan goes, Shh. When he did that, Jordan goes, shh. The man must be smiling. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> you realize when it becomes a reality to you, when it becomes real, you have no praise God. My doubts are settled. 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 And then walk across Jordan. And all the prophets are saying, woo. Elijah drop on the mountain and drop over and drop over and say, No, don't go look. Then press him and say, Go and go look. When he come back and say, I tell you not to go look. Kind of round there. I'm gone somewhere else. But if you see me when I go, if you see me when I go, the blessing is yours. <laughs> he could have stayed at Bethel. When the sons of the prophet says, your master going to be taken from you. He could have stayed at Jericho because they say your master going to be taken from you. He could have stayed at Jordan because they say your master going to be taken from you today. You know what? He had a need. And no matter what the other people them say, it's my need. I don't care about what you want to say. It's my need. He kept going. He kept going. But the, when, it, when the time came, he kept his eyes on the promise. Hallelujah. Elijah spoke the word of promise. If you see me when I go. One simple thing. If you see me when I go, it is all yours. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. What is it that you have need of? What is it that you have need of? No matter what it is. He promised to give you the desires of your heart. Is it financial? Is it spiritual? Is it emotional? Whatever it is. You want your children back? 
looked at your Every promise in the book is yours this morning. If you believe that, somebody wave your hands and tell him amen. amen. If you believe that, amen. say amen. amen. Every promise in the book is yours. Amen. And whatever you have need of this morning, you want a job, healing, deliverance, whatever you have need of this morning. Jesus is here right now. He's here right now to meet your needs. Set the captive free. Whatever you have need of. You believe that? You believe that? Faith in God. Can move a mighty mountain. Faith can calm the truck. Faith the desert light. Faith can bring the vision. Story. When the pain of today steals your hope for tomorrow and you feel like you can't go on, Jesus is waiting. He knows your sorrow, he knows your strength is gone. He bore the pain that's been breaking you, so let it go, just let it go.
and your mercies. That God, as we would come one more time, God, in this, your chosen place of worship, the Lord, to come, Lord God, to, to talk about you, Lord, to hear about you, to, to believe on you, Lord. God, we come with varying circumstances and needs, Lord, but we are placing them in your hands today, Lord. Our today, our tomorrows, Lord, and we lay all our troubles, we cast our cares upon you. Because truly, Lord, you care for us, God. Lord, as we come, just to talk about you some more for a few minutes, God, that you'd come, Lord, and open our, our hearts to you, Lord. And take, speak something to the hearts of your people, Lord. Lord. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 You love the Lord. You truly love him. Amen. Amen. I trust you be in prayer for 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 us. Pray for me. Amen. Amen. Um, amen. If you have a Bible, turn with me here for next couple of minutes as we talk for a while. Um, the Gospel according to Luke chapter 10 verse 13 okay and it reads thus woe unto thee Chorazin woe unto thee Bethsaida for if the mighty works that had been done in Tyre and Sidon which have been done in you. They had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art called to heaven, exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you Hear at me, he that despiseth you, despiseth me, and he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy return again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as a lightning falling from heaven. Behold. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You may be seated. It said, behold, verse 19 again, I give you power you believe that? The power to tread, to walk upon serpents and scorpions. Some of these things are things you don't just see up front. Some things are subtle. You're with me? Because there are some things that are coming at you that is not big and bold coming at you. But is true 
flattery and sometimes are through words spoken that somebody's saying to you and they are speaking negative into you and and you are not even recognizing sometimes the tone or what they are saying to you under disguise and some people are trying to keep you down and keep you bound are you with me and by the words they are speaking and they are not quarreling with you and they are appearing as if they are your friend and talking to you in nice tones but the tone there is a non-current to the tone and they are speaking negative and down to you in such a way that you are blinded by it but knowing not that these are serpents and scorpions to you. But I give you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. To say that the thing that come against you, you're putting them under your feet. The things that oppose and exalt itself against God should be trampled on the feet. And if you believe that footprints mean possession, you're going to possess the enemy. You're going to possess the gates of your enemy. For I give you power. Oh yeah. To tread upon. To walk upon. The, the, the things that you don't even see. The things that you don't even recognize. I'm giving you power to tread upon. And the Bible says, and Jesus said to them, and I'm, the power also is not just serpents and scorpions, but over all the power of the enemy. No matter what the devil can throw at you, I'm giving you power. In, 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 when, in, in before Jesus, just at his ascension, he said to them, and you shall receive power now and you realize this power don't just go oh i got power over the enemy i big up my chest no after that the holy ghost has come upon you oh so you know what you need first you need a seek ye first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness then all of the things shall be added unto you you gotta seek him first the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Hey, you don't get power first and the Holy Ghost come after. Because the Holy Ghost carries the power. The Holy Ghost is the power. So all that you have need of, your hand has provided. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is all you ever have needed. All the power of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt you. Uh, I believe that. You believe that. Uh, you believe that. Uh, I, I was there pondering on what we talk about. This scripture came to mind. What the scripture, but, but then I, I reflect on Job. And here is Job in a circumstance. And here is one who was righteous. The Bible speak of him. And when the, sons, when the sons of God came to present themselves before God, the devil also came. Satan came also. And he came and, and God said to him, yeah, yeah, you with me? The devil, the, 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 there's no writing that says the devil said to God, I want to test that one. I want to test that one. God said to him, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, you with me? You, 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 you're talking with me. Have you considered my servant Glenville Basic? Have you considered Timothy? Oh, you're not Timothy. Demar should call you. Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none. Hey, you wonder who he's talking to? Hey, you wonder who is Sister Very sitting right there? Sister Daniel is sitting right there. You wonder who he's talking about? Have you considered my servant? Yeah. Amen. You look at yourself. You look at your circumstance. You can make it. You can do this. I am a failure. I can't do this. Oh, I am washed up. But God is saying to the enemy, Have you considered my servant? 
that there is none like unto him. None like unto her in all the earth. She is righteous. He is righteous. A steward evil. There is no fault in him. You think you're failing. You think you're down. But God is saying, here is perfection. Hallelujah. He's looking at the end of the display. You see now, you see failure. But God is looking at perfection. Amen. 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 You see, you make it. There's all the circumstance, all the evidence of failure is staring you in the face. Have you considered my servant, Job? The first time I read Gideon, you know, I was going to preach and I look at the story of Gideon and it amazed me. How is Gideon? Gideon, take the wheat, thresh the wheat. Hide the wheat. Because the Philistines are coming. Wheat, hide it. Because every time the harvest comes, Philistines come and take away the harvest. They must come, just give me that. As you harvest, they must come take the harvest from you and go. Gideon is stressing harvest. The wheat, hide some. So it looks like him don't have any. And get some, put it out to dry, and wheat and hide and God, the angel, come and say, Oh, mighty man of valor. You, might, you imagine the look on Gideon's face. Who is he talking about? Gideon is wondering, who is he talking about? I am hiding from the Philistines. I take my little thing and hide, and you are saying, mighty man of valor. Imagine how the angel's voice is as positive. Oh, mighty man of valor. Thank you. You're looking, oh, oh, must brother join the matter. Our brother join the matter. One to the two. It's not me, mighty man of valor. You understand what God is thinking? God is thinking of you in such a way that he's saying, I give you power. Because I know you can use this power. And I know you need this power. You might not feel it. Again, it's not about the shaking. It's not about the rumbling. But the power is there. He has given you the power to tread upon scorpions. To face the enemy. You can run and hide in your way. But you got to come to a point. A realization. An understanding of what you have. Of what is in you. Of the power that is invested in you. Oh, so let the storm clouds arise. They won't worry me. For I am sheltered. I am safe in the arms of God. Hey, I, I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fret. For when the enemy comes up like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is rise up a standard against him. Amen. So come, devil. Throw what you want at me. I've got defense. I am protected. And I've got power. I've got the power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether you like it or not. Whether you want it or not. If you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You've got the power. You've got the power. Sister Chrisita, when you go out, you don't have to worry about your spot. When you go to the market, you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry about lime juice and sprinkle and dash. And turn your roll. We don't have to turn the roll. We don't have to sprinkle nothing. Because you know that. Hallelujah. For he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my... You understand fortress? Fortress. If you go to some part of Kingston, they have some cannon. 
put up on some place, some big old ball cannon, so. That's what's when for the ship used to come into the harbor, you know. You put a steel ball in the front with some, with some gunpowder at the back, and when you strike it, the ball, that's a fortress. If you go down to prison oval, that's a fortress. Security guard and wall, high wall and double fence, that's fortress. They're keeping you out and keeping those in. They're saying, don't, no, you don't come over and you ain't going out. You are fortified. Amen. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it in. Run it in. And are safe. 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 For he shall cover thee with his feathers. And on his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Power. For thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by day, night, or for the hour that flight by, nor for the destruction that wasted at a thousand and ten thousand. But oh, you thought you're talking about me? It shall not come nigh me. <laughs> Only with my eyes shall I be old and see the reward of the wicked. We now pray a bad prayer. We now wish, we now wish negative. We now say God turn them down. We now pray the bad prayer. But the wicked shall fall. He that rise against me shall rise against God. And God is my defense. If you stand against me, you stand against God. If you rise against me, you have risen up against God. Therefore, anyone that comes up against God cannot win. Cannot win. And you're bound to fail. You got to know who your position is. You got to know who you is. Who you are in the scheme of God Almighty. In the plan of God. In God's economy. Who you are. I give you power. I give you power. Job in his distress is a man that is born of a woman. When the devil come and touch him, God said, go ahead and test him and sue him. So imagine, say so you can't find food. Your body might feel sick or something like that. Let's just say food first. Something wrong in your home. People, children sick, you sick, whatever is happening in your home. Are you wondering, God, what is happening to me? Are you, you know, what consider me? Maybe God said to the devil, go and go test him. Have you considered my servant? Go and go test. I'm a guarantee you say, she now let go. Half of the promises of God. She now back down. No matter what come our way, come his way. They are going to be holy and faithful. And when you come and you realize that your house is in a turmoil. The Job got down and Job sat to say, boy, God, I prayed there was darkness upon the day I was born. Job sat at the top, but the Bible says in all this, he never cursed God, nor did he charge him wrong. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can talk to God. Some of we make God look like say, God is, we can't talk to our God. God is, you have to deal with God a certain kind of a way. You know, you're in a certain kind of way. If you go through the fire, he's there. I want to watch. If God is so different than so way off, how is going to be with you in the fire? When the flood comes, it shall not overflow you. You, you think it's like we're telling? The three Hebrew boys in the fire. It's not just any angel. Nebuchadnezzar, look over and say, and the third, look at the son of God. He is right there. We're not talking about a second angel. A second person of the Trinity. I never, we're talking about the person of God himself with you in your circumstance, wherever you may be. For I give you power. I give you power. And the, the Hebrew word is dunamis. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Dunamis, power. It's not just any power, you know. The, the, the prophet, in the, he says, if you see a little old policeman in the road, he has no power to stop a 500 horsepower. The prophet is 300, but we don't use that anymore. Talk about 500 horsepower and think vehicle. You know, 
who guy stop him can't stop a five hundred dollars power vehicle. Three hundred, not even a hundred dollars power vehicle. But when he put on the uniform and step out on the road, him not power, but him have authority. And when him lift the hand, all tires are ball. You know what? The authority step out. He got the full backing of the law. And he steps out there and you break up. If you never have any, ever on the uniform, you know, you run over him too. You're going to lick him out of the road. The master, come out of the road. Like, You're a madman. But when you put on the uniform, the same man step out. Call him mad now. He step out on the road. Him stop all traffic. Imagine you. And the prophet said, imagine a wash woman. And look at wash woman. And the side say, she won't call upon God. The prophet said, Gabriel could be, could be talking to him. Wormwood could be talking to him. But the moment this is called the washwoman coming through the blood of Jesus Christ, begin to call upon the master. God said, hold on, Gabriel. Hold on, Wormwood. Because my daughter is talking to me. You understand? You in the presence of God, the, the authority you have, that you can, you can interrupt the conversation. A high level meeting. You walk in at the boardroom, you know, you know, you may I enter there? You just walk in at the boardroom. And was, no, hold on. This is more important. This is more important. My daughter, my son is calling upon me. Amen. You are not just anybody, not some fly by night. You are the son and daughter of Almighty God. With more authority in his presence. Than a Gabriel, than a worm, than any other angel. He didn't die for them. For you, he opened the fountain, the crimson cleansing tide. For you, he's waiting in glory, seated upon the throne. Amen. For you. And when he did that upon his ascension, he breathed on them. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I'm giving you power. Amen. To tread upon serpents. Imagine, after they came back, he sent them out two pairs. Go, and they went and they preached, and they went to the multitude. And when they come back, imagine the rejoicing. They have nothing yet. You know. But they come back, and Master, even the demons are subject to me. Unto your name. Lord, we had a wonderful time. We see demons subject and Jesus saying, I see Satan falling from heaven like lightning. But I give you power. What did they have before? What did they have before? You're going through Jesus' name. Yeah, we got to go through Jesus' name. You must go through Jesus' name. But the, 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 the our pastor preached a message not just a couple Sundays ago. The little messiahs. You have to understand. We keep saying, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. But you got to stand in the position that I say unto you. But I say unto you. You got to step into the position. Full maturity. You got to mature in the word. Come to the place where you never run upon dung and the ball. Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. And you got blood for now till tomorrow. And the problem still there. That means you don't know your position yet. You don't have a call for blood, you know. On a position, but I say unto you, Satan. And we can't stand to refer to Jesus on the ship. And when you wake up, all the waves are going raging. And everybody has said, why, Jesus, will upon us, let's bail out the water. And he said, why are you so afraid? Peace, be still. In the name of God, peace be still. In the name of Jehovah, peace be still. No. Peace, be still. The prophet said, you're creator. If he is creator, and you are in that position, you are creator. He said, you can speak, you can a world, and go live in it. Some people, when we think of that, the first time we hear that in them, somewhere, we're going to speak a planet and they'll shoot off of this one. Planet out this one. No, you're not, you're not speaking a planet out this one. But you're creating a world. You're creating an atmosphere around you. And you live in this atmosphere that is impenetrable from the outside. That no matter what the devil might throw at you, 
Yeah? No matter what he might come with, you are living in this atmosphere. So when we say the storm clouds rise, the storm is raging, but I have got peace in the midst of my storm. There is sickness raging in the body, but I've got peace in the midst of my storm. My house is in turmoil, but I've got peace in the midst of my storm. There is no money, no food, but I've got peace in the midst of my storm because of what is in me. And a greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That greater than my circumstance, greater than my mountain, greater than my sickness, greater than anything at all. For God is bigger than any mountain that you can or cannot see. Because again, not everything the devil throws at you, you will see. Some of them is a long-term situation. You feel it down the road. You understand? Sometimes they set out some snare. The devil set some snare. A way down the road. You know, I'm going to chop you now, you know. But he might lay the snares down, so. Boy, you might do know it's beat you up. You walk a certain way. Come here, go sketch you when you go down, so, you know. And all the things that are in your desire that you make known, then he's going to use that against you to try to kind of have you move a certain kind of way because I'm going to trap you based on your desire, based on the things that you want, the things that you look forward, the things you lost after. I'm going to grab you in your lust and in your desires. Once you're not desiring the word, the devil not going to choose that, you know. You know, but the things that are not of God, that are in you because you're mortal. And, and you know, we want to behave as if I have no lust of anything else in my life. Oh, we all are more righteous than Paul. We all are more righteous than all these people that find that I have two laws in my members. For the Bible says, for the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Yeah? But, you, but I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, yes. But the flesh, you are still in this flesh. It's taking a while to bring this fleshman under subjection, don't it? You're going to take a while and a little by little. But the more you feed on him, the more you feed. And, and the physicist will tell me what I did in high school, a thing we call an equilibrium of forces, that one is inversely proportionate. When it's like a seesaw. That's what we're talking about. When one side goes down, the other one goes up. But as long as you have it so, Equilib it's in equilibrium, don't it? Equal forces. Yeah. That means you have it just enough of God to equal enough of the world. Yeah. You're in equilibrium, don't it? You balance. You have enough world and enough God to balance you out. It can't work. One must, it must be inversely proportionate. Inversely proportionate. When one go up, the other one go down. Caesar. As long as it balances, you're not trouble. It got to be one way or the other. Revelation says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Equilibrium means you're lukewarm. You're lukewarm. Enough hot, enough cold. Make it just feel. It insipid. Is that hot or cold? Don't it? Equilibrium of forces. One must be up or the other, or, or the other is going to be up. Listen to me. You got to choose. You got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. He said to, to um, Joshua said to them, choose who this day whom you will serve. If God be God, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. It comes a time when you can't serve the Lord for your children. You can't put them before God, but at a certain while they got to find God for themselves. You'd like to hold them and bore a hole in them head and pour Jesus in there. Don't sister babe. Say amen. Amen. You want to hold them and pour Jesus into them. Hey, just stop Jesus. And if you rock it and you can't hold somewhere, say more Jesus. More Jesus. But you know what? Now work like that. Sister Christy said, now work like that. And you can be, you can beat your head upon a stone for your children to receive Jesus and to walk a certain kind of way. 
But they're coming to a point where gonna, they're going to do their own thing. When in their own time, when they want to. But you know what? You would have done the groundwork before that. That you, you train a child in the way he should go. And the, when he's old, he, should not, he will not depart, depart from it. They go away, but there's something about the foundation. You know, this morning, I, I read, I didn't even say it, but the prophet says in the message, restoration of the bride tree, I like the thought. He said, when you look at the tree growing, that tree, when the wind blows, the tree rock, don't it? Rock like that. You see, you know what it's doing? That's nature. Every time the tree rock, it loosens the root, but it causes the root to go deeper. You see what I'm saying? Every time the wind rock the tree, it loosens the root, but it causes the root to grow some more. He sent the root further down. So your trials and your testing are there to make you stronger, more grounded, more firmly rooted. So you think you're going to run away from them. No, you can't run away. You got to stand up and face your storms, face your trials, because he has given you power to overcome. You're strengthening your roots. Send the roots down. It rocked to side. You feel like you're going to topple over, but settle a little bit. The roots are going down. Bring your roots down because it's finding sustenance. That's where, that's where you grow from, you know. In the calm time, you think, oh, yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. There is no growth. But in the trials, my trials only come to make me strong. And through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I'm getting stronger. Through it all, I'm getting better. You know that you don't learn much when you do everything right. And if you're in management or anything like that, or, or leadership, you learn from these errors, some judgment and bad judgment. You learn from these things. You know, if you make all the judgments right, you're not learning anything. You know, you're doing everything right. But when you do this, you learn, I will never do this again. Yes. You learn the corrective action. Yes. And for that, you put in preventative action that it shall never happen again. Right. So when the, when the devil rock you one side and you feel like you fall, you're learning. Okay, this you do, that can't happen to me again. Satan, if you try that again, come back and try that. Come, try it again. You know what? You're learning. And I'm learning to lean on Jesus. I'm finding more power than I could ever dream of. Because I'm learning to lean on Jesus. He has given you the power to overcome. Tread upon serpents and scorpions. Walk upon them. Walk upon them. And yeah, sometimes you don't know what is happening in your life. But your life is in a turmoil. Everything is going seem to go going wrong around you. Sometimes you gotta you gotta just walk up and down in your house and call on the name of Jesus. Yeah? yeah you have to grow up with a mother like mine who's afraid to call upon the name of Jesus. Who just walk into the house and call upon the name of Jesus. And walk around the house and call upon the name of Jesus. And if you mean she walk down the road, my mother go down the road at one. I said, and just one gone down the road and come back. She don't read your table. And she, she just call your name in the name of Jesus. Hey, oh, you need better man beside you. Call your name and thing like that. You know what? You got to learn. Sometimes you got to get up and walk around. Call upon the name of Jesus, man. Sometimes we need them. But we need them. Oh, Lord Jesus. Get up and walk through your house. Sometimes something will happen in the name of Jesus. If the children lay your hand upon them in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you got to walk in the bed in the name of Jesus. You got to call upon the name of Jesus. You got to call upon the name of Jesus. And don't be afraid for me then hear you call the name of Jesus. When you call the name, sometimes we whisper it. You know, but you got to call him and then hear me. Then know, say, you're holding him up before Jesus Christ. Sometimes when your boss are your trouble, you got to call up the name of Jesus. So you got to hold him on, you know. Hold the boss and tell him, say, I love you in the name of Jesus Christ. Make him know, I give him a firm and shake in the name of Jesus. Make him know, say, I hold it before Jesus. You watch your step. Watch your step in the name of Jesus. And now I pray in a prayer for you, but you have to know, say, Jesus, the promised side. 
we have a manager there and he was feeling sick. And he said, no, sir, we need to go pray for him. You know? He's a Muslim. And we need to go pray for him, but we never reach it. The company sell him and going back to India shortly. He was feeling ill. And I said, no, sir, we, know, we must go up there and pray for him. But you know, some of them attack from a bad man perspective because they don't really like him. But I said, we go up there and pray for him. And I saw, we have to go hug him up and tell him, boss, I love you. I love you so much. Yeah? You might not do the things your people like, but you'll get the work done. But I love you. You see what I say? Some people don't like the man in them. But you know what? In the name of Jesus, you have to love him. In my Muslim, in my, one a Hindu, this or whatever, but you know, I love you. Sometimes it, it, the boss is not working in your favor, you know. It not work in your favor. The boss will do everything him have somebody else. You believe that? But watch it. But watch it. <laughs> when a man weighs, please God. When a man's ways please God, he makes even his enemy be at peace with him. So no matter who the matter you just listen to me, man, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, boss. And you're not going to show him a bad face. You're going to go up there with love and tell him this. And you wonder, I'm going to wonder, warm to him. After all that I do, you should be hating me. But no, I love you some more. Because when you wrap me two sides with your trials and temptation, my root are firm up, you know. Firm up. I mean, I'm looking at you through the eyes, through your eyes. Because my eyes, I'm looking at you through blood. My eyes are bloodshot. But when I lick somebody in my eye, and the blood of Jesus cover my eye, I've seen you through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not seeing you for what you think you are, but I'm seeing you through the eyes of God. Some people you can't love, so you have to love them through God. Yeah, you have to love them. Say, God, love them through me. Love them through me, Jesus. So what you don't know, you look at them through the eyes of God. Your teacher, you know, work out. Because a teacher, you know, like me. But you know what? If you have a pout and muck up your face, they get worse. You know what? You're going to love them through Jesus Christ. Yeah? You're going to love them through Jesus. Your neighbor, oh, Jesus. A neighbor there. Boy, I wish them, I wish somebody would come and just get them out. You know, it's got a bundle, or something like that. No, no, no. We now wish a bundle or something like that. No, no, no. No, no. We're going to live different from that. Because sometimes something happens to you in your house. I see a neighbor, a beat the fence come across. Yeah? Uh, who was I talking to? Is there somebody give a testimony of a Rosa? Ro Rosa, 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 Alessa? With the neighbor beside them? Eh? The person who you're thinking will like you. And the first one come look for you when you're sick in the house and can't move. Some of them are sick and can't move. And the neighbor where you never deal with, run, come. Oh, it was a funeral service, don't. It was a funeral service and the lady said, the neighbor, run, come. I said, boy, I just see you come and know your routine every day. And I come check, say, and the man sick in the house, so long and couldn't move. You understand what I'm talking about? You can't live with your neighbor in a bad way. Sometimes at the very same neighbor for come feed you. Sometimes you're hungry. You don't have no food. But Elijah, when he be hungry, a, a crow, vulture, dead, then they eat dead meat, a bush. At them, they not kill nothing alive, you know, but the dead went, you know how them know when they start to rotten? When they must circle the heavens, you know, and a clean meat, you know, when they start to decay, them pick it up from way up, because they pick it up from way up, and they can pinpoint. Is it my circle around? He said, yes, man, sit here. Right there, sir. Imagine Elijah. Which one I want to see a vulture, a junker? Shit, junker. What would you say? How dead meat you come, cow, rotten meat come give me. And thing like that. Eh? Junker come and come feed you. Eh? You don't run to the junker. Because you're not, not dealing with junker. And thing like that. Eh? Eh? Yeah, we, God going to carry it come. No, I don't want it from you. God is going to give it to me. Woohoo. God said it come give you. But watch, I don't want that. God is going to give me. God is going to bless me. The blessing come. And you wonder, how much years down the road, things get worse and worse. The blessing did come and you never take it when it come. You never take it when it come because you know what? It never package the way you want it. It never come through the source you want it to come through. God said it come this way or that way. No, but God, the person who you not talk to, the person who you malice, God has sent for going to give you a blessing. But you don't want the blessing. Because your heart, imagine say your neighbor heart clean on your one, go check yourself. Check yourself. If you malice your neighbor, your heart dirty, your heart won't clean up. 
No more scare in your heart. No matter who yeah. or what the person did. Imagine Jesus Christ yeah. under the whip of the enemy. Yeah. Lord. All right, don't think about Jesus. Think about Philip. Then my pile of stone from Philip. And Philip is saying, Lord. Stephen, sorry. Don't lay this to the charge. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Not even a bit of hate. And this was Paul standing there. Or Saul. Because this Stephen's garments were at his feet. And he was overseeing. He was the overseer. For the death of Stephen standing there watching them stone him. <laughs> One more. I got one out. But in the moment when all this was happening, it was marking Saul's life. The man is dying. He now cry for mercy. But he said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He began to speak of what he seen in heaven. Now don't Saul go down try to figure out a way. What is he looking at? That in the moment of death, he is in a state. He's not even feeling the blows anymore. Not even feeling the blows anymore. They saying, God, have mercy on them. They don't even know what they are doing. What do you think they are doing? You know, they are releasing him from this house. He's been released from this house. You can't keep this. Put some more stone on it. Because the more you let me, the more you let me go. I'm being set free. And, and here is the young scholar, brilliant, dedicated, watching over that. When he walked away from there, it must have impacted his mind in such a way, so profound. It was profoundly impacting on his life. That, that he must have, on his road to Damascus, he must have had something else in his heart. He's going to do what he needs to do. But there's something else ringing in his heart because of what he saw. Imagine your family and your children that what you've done before, you've laid the foundation, Brother Glenn. And whatever they might do here after, you've laid a seed there. And all they got to say is, God, just water that seed, water that seed, water that seed. Yes, sir, man. I'll give you new power over the enemy. Power, but you know one of the things we need to come to. Though we have power over the enemy, you see? There, we need power over the enemy here. Because we can fight the enemy in front of us, but we can't fight the enemy that is within us. You can't fight the enemy that is within us. We need to battle the enemy that is within us. And when you, you can prevail, you know you can prevail over anything else. If you can win this battle, you can win any other battle. Because I've given you power. See in Luke, Luke chapter 10 verse 19. But I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy... And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. Nothing shall harm you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Say hey amen if you believe that. Say hey amen if you believe that. I feel the touch of an so warm and tender, verily.